make room for you to move Open our eyes to see your glory Drawing us deeper in you We are in a series called Make Room. If this is your first time here, guess what? This is the end of the series. Okay, so you came at the perfect time. Okay. No, just kidding. Um, but um, we've been talking about Make Room, and when you say Make Room, um, you yield or you uh, make way for someone or something that is, more, that is very important or valuable. And in this series, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, and when we say make room for the Holy Spirit, it means because we realize that the Holy Spirit is God and the Holy Spirit is important in our lives, that is why we make room for His move in and through our lives. We talked about who the Holy Spirit is. We talked about His work in the individual. We talked about how He helps us walk this Christian life last week. And so when we realize those things, when we know Him more, we will trust Him more. Pastor Steve, one of our, um, our founder, a founding uh, pastor here in the Philippines, said this about the Holy Spirit. He said, it is impossible to live the Christian life apart from the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It is impossible. It is somehow, it's difficult as it is to live this life as a Christian. It will be more difficult if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you and if you're not making room for the Holy Spirit on a daily basis as a believer. Now, I love um, the Bible and because the Bible says, you know, um, God Himself wants us to experience this, His power and presence on a daily basis. In fact, in Acts um, 1, chapter 8, uh, chapter uh, verse, verse 8 rather, it says there, but you will receive power. Can you say power? Okay, that's less powerful. Can you say power? power. That's, that's the way to go. Okay, when you say power, it has to be with power. Okay, so power. Okay, konti na lang yung may power. Okay, naubos na yung power. Okay, kakasabi ng power. Okay, but the Holy Spirit, you know, when He comes upon us, the Bible says that we will receive power. And that word over there, the word power there, came from a Greek word that I want you to learn today. It's the word dynamis or dunamis, okay? And that's where we get the word dynamic. And so the Bible is saying that if we have the Holy Spirit in us, we will live dynamic lives, okay? I don't know if you like dynamic, a dynamic kind of life, but just to give us a picture of what a dynamic life look like, looks like, it says here, it's a life that is energetic. It's a life that is active. Okay? It is a lively kind of life. It is a fresh, never gets old. Something is fresh, something exciting is happening you know, regularly in our lives. It is a life that is youthful. Any one of you, you're seated beside someone who looks young. Okay, a lot of people are honest today. Okay. But we, you know, if you want to somehow um, live a life that is youthful, the Holy Spirit can give us a youthful kind of age. Okay? This, it's not dependent on age, isn't it? But it's the energy that God gives as well in us. It's high power. And who doesn't want that kind of life? All of us, given the choice... I'm sure would say we want that kind of life. The opposite though of a dynamic kind of life is a static life. If you've seen um, your TV, um, you know, go static means it's all just like, just like that. Um, it's not seeing, you, you can't see anything and it's, it's dull and it's making you fall asleep and that's static. Because static means changeless. It means passive. It means boring. Have you ever seen a boring movie? Some of us are. Did you walk out of the movie house when, you, when, when it was getting boring? Or you're watching a show and it's already boring. I mean, you flip it to another channel. Why? Because it's boring. You don't want to waste your time on something that is boring, isn't it? When, it, uh, when you say static, it means stale. One of my friends who um, go to our victory group, he owns a... Um, coffee supply business 
And so he said, um, a lot of coffee, when you, when you brew it and you leave it for three or four hours, it's going to be stale. And when it, com- when it becomes stale, it's going to be acidic. And when it becomes acidic, it's going to hurt your, st- your stomach. And so the best thing to do with that is to just throw it away. See, a lot of lives, though, when it becomes static, the same thing happens. It becomes dangerous. It can hurt others. And so sometimes the best thing you know to do is to be avoid having a static life it's uninteresting and it's idle the worst thing about being idle Charles Spurgeon said idle people tempt the devil to tempt them (laughs) I mean we we know the job description of the enemy the devil is he is the tempter but then when you're idle, when you're not doing anything and you're just there on your you know, couches and then you're just flipping channels almost every day, going through Netflix every single day, guess what? That's the playground of the enemy. You are tempting the devil to tempt you. And we don't want that, isn't it? We don't want defeated lives. And so that is why we want to experience a dynamic, a Holy Spirit empowered kind of life question is how do we receive that kind of life and once we receive that kind of life how will that affect us as an individual we're going to answer those questions as we go through our scripture text for today if you have your bibles with you open it to acts chapter one we're going to be reading the whole context of the scripture that we quoted earlier acts chapter one verse eight we will start with verse 1, and then we're going to work our way all the way to verse 8. Verse 1, or verse 4 rather, this was written by Dr. Luke. And some say it's a continuation of the book of Luke. And so Acts 1 verse 4, And while staying with them, he, meaning Jesus, ordered them or the disciples not to depart from Jerusalem. What happened was Jesus rose, died on the cross. Remember that story? Remember that? That's the that truth, rather. He died on the cross, but after three days, he rose again from the dead. And for several days, he spent time with, it, with his disciples before he ascended back to heaven. And so one of those days, this was captured by Dr. Luke and said, while he was staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem. He gave them a clear instruction, don't go out yet. He said, but wait. Can you say wait? wait. Can you say wait? wait? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Wait, thank you for shouting. <laughs> Wait. Wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, from me. Why did Jesus have to say to his disciples, wait? I imagine if I were one of the disciples, can you imagine that, no? Being with Jesus, prolific teacher, miracle worker, but yet you saw him die on the cross. And then three days later, Wow, you weren't expecting that, but yet he rose again from the dead and you were just huddling together in one room and then he somehow, you know, tra- uh, um, um, co- I guess passed through, you know, um, uh, an enclosed door and he was there with you and he said, peace be with you. Oh man, if, I, if that was me seeing my master dead and now he's alive, I would be excited, isn't it? And not just that, but he appeared again several times. And so it just goes to show that he was really, truly alive. And if you're thinking, wow, this could be the start of something powerful and new. And no matter who will be against us, we have someone who would die and also would rise again from the dead. You would be excited to speak about him, isn't it? The disciples at that time, I presume, were very excited to speak about Jesus Christ. But Jesus told them, wait. Why? Because as excitement is good, with the mission that God has for them, with the mission that God has for you and me, excitement will not cut it. Empowerment is necessary. With a supernatural mission that God has for us, it takes supernatural strength and power to accomplish it. And that is why he said, wait. Not many days from now, he said, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit just as you were baptized with water. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. When you say baptize, it means to submerge. When you say baptize, it means to be immersed. 
That's what the word means. And so that's why when we do water baptism, for some of us who have made our faith in Christ and we said we're going to be disciples of Jesus Christ, the practical step after that is to undergo water baptism. And we have a baptismal pool here, right there in the garden. If you want to visit there, just look at that. Um, I'm not sure if you're, gonna, if you're allowed to dip there, though. But, you know, we submerge people. Okay? It depends on the sin. Okay? Pag maraming sin, mga 5-10 minutes. Okay? So, no, just kidding. But we submerge them fully because that's what the practice of the Bible says. That's what the Word says, to fully immerse. We don't sprinkle. Okay? Because that's according to the Scriptures. But when you immerse someone in the water, that's also a picture of what it means to be immersed in the power of the Holy Spirit. Some say in the olden times when someone is baptized, you know, um, in, in waters of baptism, they baptize them in the ocean or in the sea. And when they submerge themselves there, it's as if they're saying, God, you are this big. And I am submersing myself. I'm submerging myself. I am immersing myself in your presence, in your power, and in your love. Here it's saying you will be baptized. You will be immersed in the Holy Spirit. And just to illustrate to us the power of being immersed in the Holy Spirit. How many of you like swimming? My kids and I, um, whenever we would go to a pool, we would do uh, an activity. Um, uh, well, the first th time that we did it, it was kind of cool. They were, they were amazed at it because they tried to lift each other. They tried to lift me, okay, in a normal environment. And so I asked them, okay, the three of you lift me, okay. And they're having a hard time lifting me, you know. While my son said, oh, I can do it. And he was able to somehow give me a nudge, okay. But then we all went down to the pool. And when we were there, okay, say, oh, can you lift me again? And my son said, when he did that, whoa. He was able to lift me, okay, easily, easily because of the environment. How many of you know the weight did not change? I did not change. I wish I did. I wish I lost some of these flabs and fats here, but it was still there, okay? What the difference was, was the environment. How many of you know every single day we are faced to carry weights? Issues in life, problems in life, decisions to face, tuition fee of our kids, you know, mortgages, business opportunities that are somehow trying to spiral down, the stock market, and all of these things. We carry a lot of these weights. It's one thing to carry it alone. But God is saying He wants us to be immersed with His Spirit so that we can carry it with Him. We can carry it with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is why he said, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Immerse yourself in the Holy Spirit. Because when you do, how many of you know, it's a whole new ball game. Verse 6, so when they had come together, they asked him, okay, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They're pertaining to a promise that will happen, you know, when the Son of God comes back again from heaven. And it's, it's, it's speaking about the end of the age. That's what they're saying. Is this the end now? Are you going to restore the kingdom back to Israel? Are you going to restore Israel now to his former, to his, her former glory? Some experts call this eschatology or the study of the end. Okay? Eschatos means end and uh, logos means the study of. And so they were somehow consumed, okay, with, um, is this the end? Is this the, uh, the mark of the end? Jesus answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by His author own authority. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But His answer was this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the, end of the, to the end of the earth. See, the disciples were asking about an eschatological question. Jesus' answer to them was a missional answer. They were hoping for one thing, but Jesus' 
answered another thing. Has that ever happened to you? You were asking God why is this is happening to you, but yet you got a different response. God's ways are higher than our ways, right? God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And in this case, they were concerned with the end times. And a lot of people, a lot of Christians are like this. A lot of Christians are so consumed, you know, with the end times. And they're so consumed with, you know, the 666. And where are we going to have, you know, marks here on our head? And it's going to be barcode ba or tattoo bayan or microchip bayan or nanotechnology. And so they're so consumed with what will happen in the end. They become, you know, um, useless here on earth. Jesus prefers that we are not too heavenly focused so that we will not be earthly no good. God wants us to be the salt and the light of the world. God wants us. God has a mission for us. Amen? God has a mission for every single one of us. Can you say to your neighbor, you have a mission? Okay, you have a mission. All of us here, we all have a mission in God. Good thing is, we're not going to do this by our own power. Again, in verse 8, it says, but you will receive power. Can you say power once more? Power. Thank you. Okay, that's very strong. Okay. Power. Again, that word came from that, you know, Greek word dunamis or dynamis, where we get the word dynamo, okay, or dynamite. See, in the olden times when they would construct roads, all they have are what? Shovels and picks, right? To make those roads. One of my favorite roads right now is in Esitex. When you travel through Esitex and you go through Subic, there are mountains there that somehow they were able to slice and cut and the road will pass through it. Can you imagine how they made that? In the olden times, they would also have those kinds of roads, but what they will do is instead of using shovels and picks, they will use dynamites. So that it will blast open the mountain so that they will be able to pass, uh, made, uh, create roads that will be you know, um, easy for easy access for the people. Now, if you use shovels and picks, how long will that take? How long will it take for you to carve mountains? It's going to take years. It's going to take months even, or months perhaps. But with the dynamite, it would take less than months, seguro. See, some of you here, you are facing mountains. Some of you here, you might be facing some challenges are mountain like god wants you to use his power god wants you to experience his power so that you don't have to strive you don't have to you know um, sweat it out and do it in your own way god wants to partner with you that is the power when we allow the holy spirit to be with us now what is that power for first corinthians paul wrote this and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That's that same word, dunamis or dynamis. You know, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now, if you are here, you're looking for a season. You also want to experience that power. You also want to experience firsthand. I mean, I'd love to see more of that, right? We'd love to see more healings, right? We'd love to see miracles happen. We'd love to see all of those things happen, right? That happens with the Holy Spirit. And that happens as we give glory and preach about Jesus Christ. Amen? That will happen when we cooperate with Him in preaching the gospel. Which leads me to my last point. It says there, the purpose of this power is so that you and I will be witnesses. Can you say witnesses? Witnesses. A witness is someone who speaks about what he has seen. A witness is someone who speaks about what he has heard, isn't it? A witness is someone who testifies in the court and um, um, speaks to the people there about what he has witnessed. And that is basically what we're doing. We are just sharing to others what we ourselves experience. We are just sharing to others about God's goodness in our lives and God's goodness in other people's lives. We are just sharing to them what we witnessed in the Word of God. And guess what? When we do that, the Bible says there's going to be a dynamic demonstration of the power of God. It says there, you're going to be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth or to the ends of the earth. See, for those Christians, those disciples that Jesus spoke to about this, 
he said those who will preach in Jerusalem, and most of them perhaps were thinking, oh, Jerusalem, it's easy. Okay, those are our friends. Judea, oh, it's also easy because those are our neighbors. We know them. But Samaria, Samaria, Samaritans, we don't like Samaritans. To the end of the earth, we don't know those people. Guess what? When the Holy Spirit's power becomes real in us, God will give us the grace, not just to speak to the people that we like, but also to preach to the people that we don't like. Not just to the people that we know, but also to the people that we don't know. God will give you the grace to do that. Amen? Are you excited for it? I hope that you're ready for it because God is in the business of making this world back to his original purpose. He's in the business of saving this world and he, is part he wants to partner with you to do this. I like how um, one pastor um, saw, you know, the progression in the book of Acts. In, um, if you look at the book of Acts, it's, an organized, it's organized in accordance with the geographical progression of that promise. If you look at Acts 1, verse 1 to 8, or 1, all the way to chapter 8, it's in Jerusalem. The gospel was being preached in Jerusalem. In Judea and Samaria, in Acts chapter 8, all the way to 12, the gospel spread, you know, in Judea and Samaria. And then, in Acts 13 to 28, and even up to now, the gospel is spreading all across the world. Can you imagine a group of fishermen a handful of fishermen who were not educated. God used them to change the world. God used them to do those miracles, to do those healings, to do those powerful preachings. And it was all because of the Holy Spirit. If you look at Christianity today, they say 10 years or 100 years ago, we were about 600 million, but now 2 billion people two billion christians in the world it all started with a handful a small group a small victory group of fishermen and right now it blew it grew to about two billion people several decades ago the leaders of china made a um, uh, an ed uh, a policy that all missionaries all christians should go out of the country so that they can make sure that everyone becomes a communist and so at that time there was about they estimate that there was about two million christians and they were hoping that after 50 years christianity will die in china you know what happened 2010 they made a secret survey and the survey said an estimate of about two or about sorry 200 million chinese are now christians what the enemy meant for harm, God's power can turn it into good. What the enemy wants to stop, God's power is able to triumph over it. Question is, are you going to be part of it? Are you going to be part of what God is doing? One of my favorite experiences was being able to surf. Anyone of you here, you do enjoy surfing or you surf? Not surf the internet, but actually surf. Okay. Um, I was able to do it once. <laughs> my friends invited my family to go to La Union, and um, we know that that's one of the surfing capitals, surfing hubs here in, in the Philippines. And um, they say that when you use a, a, a short board, okay, when you use a short board, it's the hardest board to use because it's hard to balance, especially when you're tall like me. Well, it's hard to balance. Your center of gravity is messed up as well as your, if, especially if your tummy is not, you know, fully tucked in. You know, man, it's, it's hard to balance. And so they gave me, uh, as they would say, an idiot board. <laughs> A long board, okay? Sabi nila, Pastor, impossible na hindi ka makatayo dyan, okay? It's impossible that you don't get to use because this is the simplest, simplest board there is. And to make it easier, Pastor, this is what we'll do. Okay, we'll go with you, okay, to the middle of, to, you know, where, where there's uh, waves, and then we will even push you. <laughs> I kid you not, I found it really hard to surf. I mean, I 
seven, I, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 times or more. My wife said it's even more. Okay. I wasn't able to stand up and serve. I kept falling and falling and falling. I even sprained my ankle in one of those occasions. But there was one moment there. And there's this nice wave. And then I saw the wave and I said, I'm ready. And then he pushed me. <laughs> pushed me and then I was able to stand up. And as I stood there, whoa. Somebody got a picture, so I have an evidence for this. So I was just like there, and it felt like I was in this huge wave in Hawaii with me in that shoe, but it was just this high. Okay? But it was still awesome, okay? Wow. Being able to surf like that, it was awesome. It was a nice feeling. It was a powerful, powerful experience. See, guess what? In our day and age, there is a wave that God is doing. A wave of breakthroughs. A wave of restoring families. A wave of saving campuses. A wave of saving, you know, commun communities. A wave of saving nations. And He is inviting you and me. Will you surf in the wave that God is doing? Will you partner with Him in what He is doing at this time, in this generation? You want to experience a dynamic life. You want to experience an energetic life, a lively life, a purposeful kind of life. One pastor put it this way. Find out what God is doing and fling your whole life into it. Fling your whole life. And whatever, whatever means it is, just fling your life into it. One pastor or one student came to one of our youth pastors and said, Coach, I've been having a dry season at this time as a Christian. And this youth pastor said, Well, when was the last time you shared your faith to another person? When was the last time you shared the gospel? Because the Bible says, When you refresh others, you yourself will be refreshed. If you are here, you're believing for a dynamic kind of life. If you are here, you want to experience the Spirit's power move in your life. If you are here, you want to experience more of that energized, that active kind of life that God is promising. Are you ready and are you willing to share about Jesus Christ to others? Because that's where the wave is going. That's where the power is directed. And I tell you, it is a life-giving, energizing kind of life. Amen? The Bible says in Luke chapter 11, Jesus said this, If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? He's directing this to His children. And we know from Scripture that says, those who receive and believe in Christ, God called them to be children of God. And if you have received and believed Jesus in your life, Jesus is saying, do you want that dynamic life that the Holy Spirit gives? Do you want that powerful, that energy, that life-giving life? That in the midst of all the storms around you, you can still be energetic and dynamic. Do you want that kind of victorious life? Jesus said, you have a good heavenly Father. All you need to do is just ask because He gives of Himself as a gift because He loves us. Amen? Can we all stand up? We're going to be worshiping again, but before we do, and please don't go out yet, we're going to be praying. We're going to be believing the Holy Spirit this morning or this afternoon to move. We're going to be asking Him. How many of you, you want to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you once again? We want to ask the Holy Spirit to empower us again, right? How many of you, you want the dynamic life of the Holy Spirit in us? We're going to believe that the Holy Spirit, you know, will fill us afresh today. But before we do that, I just want to give an opportunity for some of us here. Maybe you have living a static life for several years now. And you don't want that kind of life anymore. 
You want that dynamic, life-giving, energy, forgiven, free, alive, passionate, high-empowered kind of life that Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10. Well, Jesus said, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one experiences these things except through Him. The Bible says, if you receive and believe in Jesus' name, God gives you the right to become a child of God. And maybe you are here, you've never made a decision. You've never confessed. You've never received that gift that God is giving. Guess what? This is no coincidence. This moment right now is no coincidence that God has set this time for you to hear this message and God is right now extending His hand to you. My son, my daughter, will you receive? Will you believe in me? Will you receive me? Do you want that life that I have for you? And so with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, if you are here and you're saying, Jesus, I want to receive you today as my Lord and as my Savior. Jesus, I want to make a confession, a declaration. I believe in you and I receive that life that you give, that forgiven kind of life, that saved kind of life, that energized kind of life. If that is you with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, please lift up your hands so that I know to pray for yes yes many hands lifted many hands lifted thank you god thank you jesus this is the day that god has made this is the day that god has made so that we will experience salvation so that we will experience healing so that we will experience being brought back again to his name for the last time if you want to make that decision please lift up your hand yes praise god praise god Praise God. Can we give God a, a big hand? In fact, can I just ask you, those of you who lifted up your hands, again, this is not to, you know, put you on the spot, but somehow there's something that happens when you make a bold step. Your decision becomes like an imprint, like that on that paper, it becomes sealed. And you know, I want to invite you, if you lifted up your hand, can I ask you to come here in front? Just please stay here in front to say and to declare to the people around us, bring your stuff, bring your bags, bring your, you know, just please bring, be here to just say to God, to boldly say to God, Lord, today I am making a decision to receive you as my Lord. I am making a decision to let go of my static life and I am embracing your dynamic life, your dynamic purpose for my life, your dynamic will for my life. I am receiving your dynamic spirit today. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. For those of you who are here in front, can you just please look here for a moment? I just want to see all of you. You know, the Bible says, and I'm reminded of this, the Bible says, whenever a child of God comes back to him, there is a cosmic celebration in heaven. The angels, the legions of angels right now are rejoicing. They're rejoicing. They're rejoicing for you. They're excited for you. They're excited because they know this day is the start of that dynamic purpose of God in your life. This is the day that God has made for you. Amen? Would you please pray this prayer? Just like how I prayed this 20 years ago, I invite you to pray this prayer. There's nothing magical or powerful about this prayer, but when you pray this with your heart, when you pray this with your heart, that's where the miracle happens. Amen? Just pray, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son Jesus to die on the cross for me so that I can be forgiven of my sins. Thank you, Lord, for making a way where there is no way for me. And so today, I receive that gift. I receive Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. I confess with my mouth He is Lord. And I believe in my heart that He is alive. I receive in Jesus' name the dynamic will of God the life that walks away from sin and the life that embraces your will. Lord Jesus, today, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, I receive the grace to live a life that pleases you. I receive in Jesus' name the dynamic Holy Spirit in my life and the dynamic purpose that you have for me. Lord Jesus, I dedicate my life to you from this day forward. In your mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, the people around you, they are victory group leaders and they will give you a gift because of the decision that you've made and they will explain to you a little bit about the decision that you've made. I'd like for us to just lift up our hands right now. Lift up our hands. Lord, we want to receive afresh your spirit today. Lord, when we look forward to what is ahead of us this week, when we look at our families, when we look at our, Lord, jobs, Lord, our, Lord, um, communities, Lord, thank you that you desire for us to be witnesses, to be salt and light over that place, in those places. And so even now, Lord, we pray. Holy Spirit, we ask, Jesus, we ask that you would fill us with the Holy Spirit once again. Oh, fill us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We receive a fresh grace, Lord, from you. We receive, Lord, a fresh passion for you, Lord. We receive, Lord God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Even now, thank you. We receive that boldness, Lord. There's going to be boldness, Lord, that you're doing, Lord God. There's boldness that you're imparting. There is compassion that you're imparting to us, Lord. Thank you that you will cause us to be a blessing to many. Lord, may you use our lips, Lord. Thank you that, Lord, our lips here, Lord God, you're going to use it. Lord, not just to preach, but some of us will prophesy. Some of us, Lord God, will speak to those who are sick and they will get healed because of the power of Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We're excited for the miracles. We're excited for the breakthroughs. But more than anything, Lord, we're excited, Lord, for the hundreds and hundreds of our relatives, of our families, and our friends who will turn their hearts back to you, Lord, because it is your desire for them to go back to you, Lord. And so even now, we receive once again the Holy Spirit's empowerment. We receive it today in Jesus' name. And everyone, take a deep breath. Amen and amen. Praise God.